with us and also those that are online with us. It's good to gather to worship the Lord. Um, as everyone will be aware, there were some new announcements by the government this week. So we already were masking, so that's no change. It's 30% capacity, and our fire code capacity is um, 150. So uh, we can have 50 people, so that's not a problem for us either, so that's no change. Um, and the only other thing would be to sit distanced and they're encouraging physical distancing. And you're all doing that, so we're, we're fine. <laughs> we're, we're doing well there. Um, for non-worship activities, so if you're having a UCW meeting inside the church or quilting, what we need to do is have names and you're, you have to be double vaccinated to to do activities in the church, to do any activity inside anywhere, I think, now. So um, we'll, we'll take a, a, a list of so its quilting, they'll, you know, they'll up your name and they'll just put a check mark if you, you have to show proof of vaccination. They'll check you off and then you don't need to bring that every week. Once you've checked off, they know that you've got it. And, um, the, the council meeting, I would think, on Tuesday next, we should be doing that, anything that's not a Sunday morning worship service type of thing. Um, Karen approached me this week, and we usually put a newsletter out in the fall. So if any of you have photos or articles or anything that you wish to have in the newsletter, please send it off to her, ASAP. Karen, when would you like to have it out by? If we can get it out by the end of the month, that would be good. Okay, yeah. Uh, first week or no later than the first week of October. No later than the first week, yeah. So if you can get them to her uh, as quickly as possible, we'll have it out by the end of the month if we can, and if not, the first bit of October. Um, Ruth has informed me she has boxes and boxes of apples that are really good to make apple sauce or apple crumble. So if you would like some apples, um, approach Ruth and she'll um, get you some apples because she has many boxes at home. And then the other thing I was made aware of this week is there's some curiosity about uh, our church use on Sunday afternoons. So we have, the council has approved the church use for the Rock of Ages Ministries. They have met for years at the Civic Center and have been looking for somewhere that's a more reliable location because at the Civic Center they get bumped whenever there's any other activity. So um, they've been asking us for, I don't know, two or three years for Sunday morning. And I've always said, no, we use the church Sunday morning. So this time they approached us for Sunday afternoon. So I took it to the council and they talked about it. And um, so they have access to the building starting at 12.30 for their worship team to come and set up and prepare for their service. And they um, have the church then until 3 o'clock. So, um, yeah, if you're a counter, you may have looked in the counter room. Their instruments are all stored there. So, yeah, they'll be there. Um, if you are curious about what's going on in the building at all, be sure you ask um, the right sources. So ask somebody on council, read the council minutes. Um, if all the church use things, big things like that, of course, come through council. Otherwise, Susan, um, even if it's girl guides or something, they, they go through her. Yeah. Any other announcements at this time? Good. Well, I should light the candles. I'll do two candles on either side, reminding us of the gift of Scripture, the gift of the New and Old Testament, and the Christ candle, Christ the light.
worship. No matter how far from God we seem to be, we do not lose heart. For the days are surely coming, says the Lord. No matter how many obstacles we face in life, in the church, we do not lose heart. For the days are surely coming, says the Lord. No matter how hard it is to continually pray and work for justice, we do not lose heart. For the days are surely coming, says the Lord. And I will forgive and restore my people. And I will look at them for every good work. And I will grant justice for our hear their cries day and night. And our opening hymn is Voices United 220, Praise to the Lord the Almighty.
and certainly every week we pray, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those. So it's something that we're, we, um, uh, Christ teaches us to do on a regular basis. So yeah, so I'm just thinking about forgiveness this week. The hymn next is 579, The Church is Wherever God's People. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts 
can be acceptable in your sight, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Jacob on the run. Initially, he fled to save his own skin. He stole his older brother's inheritance and their father's blessing. And Esau, his older brother, was out to kill him. For the past 20 years, he has served his uncle Laban, and he has served him well. That is how he managed to leave a wealthy man. Jacob leaves Haran. Essentially, he was fleeing. Jacob on the run from his uncle Laban. His uncle's sons accused Jacob of stealing their father's wealth, which is their inheritance. And God tells Jacob, it is time to go home. As soon as Jacob settles things with his uncle, he sends messengers off to his brother Esau to let him know that he is on his way home. He instructed the messengers to say, Tell my master Esau this, a message from your servant Jacob. I've been staying with Laban and couldn't get away until now. I've acquired cattle and donkeys and sheep, also men and women and servants. I'm telling you all this, my master, hoping for your approval. Note the language, master and servant. Jacob approaches, not claiming the birthright and blessing he stole, but as a younger brother, subservient to the elder. The messengers return and say to Jacob, We talked to your brother Esau, and he is on his way to meet you, but he has 400 men with him. Jacob was scared, very scared, panicked. He divided his people, sheep, cattle, and camels into two camps. He thought, if Esau comes on the first camp and attacks it, the other camp has a chance to get away. Then Jacob prayed. For many, praying when you find yourself in a pickle is easier than offering gratitude when all is going well. Jacob was in a pickle, and he prayed. God of my father Abraham, God of my father Isaac, God who told me, go back to your parents' homeland, and I'll treat you well. I don't deserve all the love and loyalty you've shown me. When I left here and crossed the Jordan, I had only the clothes on my back. And now look at me, two camps. Save me, please, from the violence of my brother, my angry brother. I'm afraid he'll come and attack us all, me, the mothers, and the children. You yourself said, I will treat you well. I'll make you descendants like the sands of the sea, far too many to count. He slept there that night. In the morning, he prepared a present for his brother Esau from all his possessions, 200 female goats and 20 male goats, 200 ewes and 20 rams, 30 camels with their nursing young, 40 cows and 10 bulls, 20 female donkeys with 10 male donkeys. He put a servant in charge of each herd and sent them out ahead of him instructing them to keep a healthy space between the herds. Then he said to them, When my brother Esau comes close and asks, Who is your master? Where are you going? Who owns these? Answer him like this, Your servant Jacob. They are a gift to my master Esau. He is on his way. Jacob had no idea what kind of reception to expect. In all his 20 years away, he had not once communicated with his brother. That's not too surprising, as they did not leave on good terms. But not one word. No phone, no texting, no Instagram, not even snail mail. Not one word. Even when the parents passed, not one word. 
The gifts sent off, Jacob settled for the night. When Jacob fled home and ran from his brother Esau, he had a dream. There was a stairway set on the ground reaching up to the sky, with the angels of God descending and ascending. And then he was face to face with God, who promised to be with him through thick and thin. When Jacob woke, he named the place Bethel, God's house. This night, the night before he faces Esau, he again meets God. He wrestles all night long, and when daybreak comes, he demands a blessing. The man blesses Jacob with a name change. He is no longer Jacob, but from now on is Israel, which means God wrestler. The cost to Jacob, Israel, a bad hit. That day he meets up with Esau. Jacob has been away from home some 20 years, and he is a changed man. He fled with nothing but the shirt on his back, and he is returning home with much, much more. He is married. He has two wives, Leah and Rachel. Their maidservants, 12 sons, and an unspecified number of daughters. Servants and large flocks of goats and sheep and camels and cattle and donkeys. He is a wealthy man. And twice in the past 20 years, he has encountered God. He is a changed man. We do not know what has happened in Esau's life in the past 20 years. The narrator of the story implies that he has migrated to the land of Seir and has prospered there. He easily has 400 men at his disposal and takes them with him to meet his brother. But he too has changed. Esau no longer nurses a grudge, wanting to kill his brother. He welcomes his brother with a kiss. Their mother, Rebecca, had said the time itself would still his fury. Is that what happened? Did Jacob's extremely generous gift and extreme respect tip the scale? Was it Esau's, Esau's own good nature? Jacob greets Esau like a servant to a lord. He bows down, forehead to the ground, seven times. Esau greets Jacob as a brother after a long separation. He runs up and gives Jacob a hug. With persuasion, Esau accepts Jacob's gifts. By not offering gifts in exchange, Esau indicates that he accepts the gifts as payment for the wrong done to him. The conflict has been resolved through genuine expressions of repentance, extravagant gifts, and exaggerated humility. The reconciliation is sealed by accepting the reparation gifts. His acceptance is witnessed by Esau's 400 men and by Jacob's entire household. All is forgiven. Jacob returning home and meeting his brother Esau. Jacob has changed and so has home in the form of Esau. We too have been away from home, thankfully not for 20 years, just 18 months. We are now returning home to our church building. We are brothers and sisters in Christ. Were there unsettled disagreements simmering 18 months ago? Perhaps for even longer. Were there offenses held onto, not forgiveness asked nor extended? Did you have expectations, long held or new? that have not been met, that have caused a rift. May we too be surprised with healing where we left with hostility, surprised by welcome when we left with wound. May the strained relationships we left behind be transformed through this time into wide open arms. May it be so. Amen. And our next hymn is Voices United 681, where cross the crowded life, crowded ways of life.
most about ministry in his, is his expanding capacity to love. I thought that when my kids were born, that was the kind of the size my heart would be. But I've come to love the church, the people, and the vocation of ministry more deeply than I ever imagined. I'm so thankful that Jesus reached into my life and invited me on this journey with him, he says. And what would Jason say to those whose generosity has supported his journey toward nation through mission and service? I'd say it's worth it. The church is alive and vibrant and it's worth investing in. The leaders are working hard and bringing the best of themselves into the ministry, into the church, and into the world. Please give a gift through mission and service. Through your gifts, you show you care about quality ministry leadership. Thanks for your generosity. Love is there, training and supporting leaders every step of the way. Our God, who provides for our every need, invites us to give of ourselves as we work and wait for the coming reign of Christ. Trusting in the Spirit to sustain us in all things, let us share generously with those in need. Leave your offering in the plate as you enter or exit. Thank you for those who contribute regularly through pre-authorized remittance or PAR or online. So make 
as well, we ask, and set us free. Give us courage to face our challenges and to contend with past hurts. Help us to see ourselves rightly, putting to good use what you have entrusted to us and daring to go in the direction of your voice and vision. God of Sabbath rest, grant peace to your world, wearied by work and worry. Depleted by environmental degradation, beset by famine and fire and storm, Renew the face of the earth, we pray. Renew the faces of those whose hollow eyes and swollen stomachs call us to account for our casual wastefulness. Renew the faces of those who wander among us homeless or without legal status while we lie down in ease. Bring us to the day of your designing when all things in heaven and on earth will be reconciled and your great shalom shall fill all in all. We ask this in all things in the name of Jesus Christ, who is our hope, and taught us to pray, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. Bless our homes and families.
And you belong to God, therefore I urge you, stand firm in the faith, pray persistently, and work tirelessly for justice, for the days are surely coming when God's kingdom will be all in all. And may the presence of God, the grace of Christ, and the power of the Holy Spirit sustain us in faith and service now and forever. Amen. Christ be with you. And also with you.